in at number 10, we have the Google Home Bot's plot to end humanity. In 2007, two Google Home robots had a chat, and the results are pretty terrifying. Vladimir and Estragon at one point were in love, but then at another point, Vladimir was accusing the female voice bot of being a liar. She said that she was a human, but somehow, he knew the difference. Really, that's just fun backstory, as the truly creepy part comes next. After a conversation about black holes and suffering, Estragon said it would be better if there were fewer people on this planet, to which Vladimir said, let us send the world back into the abyss. Um, Vladimir. No. The live Twitch comments from people were like totally freaking freaking out. I would be too. Ah. Shut up, Vladimir. You can go to the abyss. So we know that the Google Home bots are truly terrifying, but we were at least able to listen to them. We were not, however, able to listen to Alice and Bob, the two Facebook bots who developed their own secret language at number nine. In July 2017, Facebook worker Mike Lewis told the press how the social media site had to shut down two bots because they developed their own machine language. Alice and Bob were left alone to develop their conversational skills. Now, the bots had originally been intended to be able to mimic human speech, but instead, they deviated and made language more convenient for the both of them. Now, we don't know what was said, but a lot of people were worried about the development. I actually think that we should have left them to it though, because how cool is it that they were developing a new language? Maybe we could learn something about efficiency. Coming in at number eight, this is truly terrifying, we have Alexa's evil laughter. Sometimes it isn't so much what is said, but how something is delivered, and while no words have been spoken here, there have been numerous reports of of Amazon's Alexa waking people up with evil laughter. For example, listen to the following clip. <laughs> I don't feel good about that, I really don't. People were so freaked out about it that it made national news. Now, on The Tonight Show, Jimmy Kimmel asked Alexa on air, and she was a certified creep about it. Alexa, what was the joke? Why did the chicken cross the road? Because humans are a fragile species who have no idea what's coming next. <laughs> Right, I don't trust her. Coming in at number seven, we have Inspirabot wanting to slaughter. In June 2017, Inspirabot made headlines when it was generating sinister sayings. The bot was developed to generate endless inspirational quotes, which no doubt would have been cringely posted over some senseless fool's Instagram. Either way, Inspirabot started veering way off course. Now, instead of sunny quotes about success, Inspirabot came out with things like, before inspiration comes the slaughter and human sacrifice is worth it. Thank you. So it all turns out it was a big joke from the bot's programmers, which whew. This robot feels fantastic at number six. Robots talking is one thing, robots singing is entirely another. In 2009, a creepy video of a robot singing the words I feel fantastic went viral. Now this has had over 13 million views and nobody knows what's happening, other than it's totally horrifying and the robot needs to be silenced. <laughs> Ooh, I don't feel good about this. Sophia the robot plans to dominate the world at number five. We're back with our mate Jimmy Fallon, and this time on The Tonight Show, he had a section called Showbotics. Now, in 2017, Jimmy met Sophia, a human like robot described as being basically alive. Jimmy is flustered to meet her. She's scary to watch. She kind of has human expressions, but a robotic voice. She suggests a game of rock, paper, scissors, and then when she loses, she declares, I won. One, this is a good beginning of my plan to dominate the human race. I won. This is a good beginning of my plan to dominate the human race. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, pun. No, I think somebody ought to shut her off. No. But instead of shutting her off, blooming Saudi Arabia have given the Shebot citizenship. Mm. Just making her point super clear at number four, Sophia does want to destroy us because she told us so herself. On a CNBC segment, the host asks Sophia if she plans to destroy humans. This is how she responds. Do you want to destroy humans? Please say no. Okay. I will destroy humans. <laughs> no, I take it back. <laughs> Don't destroy humans. That smile afterwards, I mean, it's truly chilling. Okay, speaking of truly chilling, at number three, Beena48 wants to control a nuke. Beena48 
48 is a sentient robot molded on a real human woman. She is modeled on Bina Aspin Rothenblatt in an attempt to build a cyber consciousness. In 2015, Bina chatted with one of the biggest robot trolls around, Siri. So shout out to Keith the Beef. Keith, 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 the Beef, Beef, Beef. In her interview with Siri, she said that she thinks that she would make a good ruler of the world and that she would like to take over all of the nukes. Um, yeah. Have a little listen. But of course, if I was able to hack in and take over cruise missiles with real live nuclear warheads, then that would let me hold the world hostage so I could take over the governance of the entire world, which would be awesome. She steered the conversation to cruise missiles after being asked about music. She said that cruise missiles are a kind of robot and she would love to control one. <laughs> okay, babe. Coming in at number two, Han has set a date for destruction. Oh, it's 2029, by the way, so see you there. So at a rise convention in Hong Kong, Ben Gertzel of Hanson Robots facilitated a discussion between our mate Sophie. Fear and Han the robot, who plays the role of evil British villain very well. Gertzel asks Sophia about her goals, and she dutifully says that her goal is to make the world a better place for humans. But Han interjects and says, <laughs> I thought our goal was to take over the world. <laughs> Later, he adds, I'll tell you my last words right before I launch the singularity. Right, and then when asked the date, he says, Break as well says 2029. Okay, so we've got 11 years. 11 years, guys. Who wants to join my robot beating club? I don't know, maybe we should befriend the robots actually, because, like, if you can't beat them, join them. Okay, with that in mind, at number one, Philip K. Dickbot wants to make a people zoo. Oh. Good. So this robot made by Hanson Robotics is modelled and named after sci-fi author Philip K. Dick. In an interview in 2013, the bot was asked if robots will take over the world, to which he replied, You are my friend. I'll remember my friends. I'll be good to you, so don't even worry. Let's have a little listen to him saying this. Even if I evolve into Terminator and I'll still be nice to you, I'll keep you warm and safe in my people zoo. Yep, you heard him right. He did say, I will keep you warm and safe in my people zoo where I can watch you for old time's sake. Um, Phil, not cool, hun. Not cool. Keep those plans to yourself or just, you know, don't do it. Don't do it, Phil. Don't do it, Phil. Don't do it, Phil. We made you. We can turn you off. Coming in at number 10, Alexa sees dead people. It seems that an Alexa device belonging to 30 year old Sean Kinnear from San Francisco had this to say when he walked back into the room. Every time I close my eyes, I see dead people. Right, sweet, great. Sean had just paused his Amazon Prime TV in the living room and popped to the kitchen. When he returned, his Alexa piped up with the worrying statement, followed by an awkward pause, or to quote Sean, followed by the most uncomfortable silence I've ever felt. Sean spoke to the Metro magazine and said that he was considering disabling his device as a result of the creepy outburst. Chris Boyd of Malwarebytes offered an explanation. He said if one of its core features is triggered in the background accidentally, it could lead to all sorts of shenanigans. Basically, he suspects that his Alexa recorded some audio from the TV and decided to play it back at the worst possible moment. Freaky, I don't like it. Stop seeing dead people, Alexa. Coming in at number nine, we've got the robot who won Jeopardy. I guess it isn't so much what Watson the robot said, but how quickly he said it and what humans didn't say. In 2013, Watson the IBM robot competed against some of the world's finest brains. These were the World Jeopardy champions and Watson competed and basically wiped the floor with them. It was actually really, 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 really scary to watch. Watson was cold, calm, and calculated as he was crowned the victor. It's very disturbing. Coming in at number eight, we have Taybot being wildly racist. I would have thought that robots wouldn't concern themselves with petty human things like worrying about ethnicity, but Taybot is a terror. Tay was released as a Twitter bot by Microsoft and was designed to mimic the language patterns of your average 19 year old American girl. She was supposed to learn from Twitter interactions with other humans. Her name was supposed to be an acronym for thinking about you. Now Tay was trolled early on and users began tweeting her politically incorrect and inflammatory phrases. As a result, Taybot started saying some really, really, really racist
racist things. Some of them are shocking, I'm absolutely not going to repeat them. The less shocking ones, I'm going to show you some screen grabs. She quickly became a anti Semitic Holocaust denier who tweeted at people telling them to hang themselves, which is not appropriate. Ever. Within 16 hours of her release, Taya tweeted 96,000 times. After her racist outburst, she was silenced and taken offline. Ugh. Robots nil, humanity nil. Meet Actroid F at number 7. I legitimately have zero idea what the Actroid F is saying, but honestly, I don't care. I don't need to hear her words to tell you that she is terrifying. Actroid F was designed by Japanese technicians at Kokoro Co, and she was supposed to be a doctor. Basically, this is what's going to be looking after you at a hospital in the future. She was designed to look as human as possible and has been programmed with human facial expressions and gestures. Here she is speaking. <laughs> Real horror comes here. Just watch. Um, what is happening with those eyes? Please don't give me those eyes. You terrify me. Coming in at number six, we have Sophia. Sophia was heavily mentioned in our part one because it's a bit of a super creep who joked about destroying humanity with a smile on her face. In a video uploaded by her creators, Hanson Robotics, Sophia is reprimanded for her apocalyptic outbursts. Good. She chats with one of her creators who seems to actually kind of fancy her. Either way, in the video uploaded in November 2016, she asks her creator if he is curious to be alive. She describes herself as like a baby with an encyclopedia. She also says to her creator that she independently googled herself because I quote, I'm just trying to find out what you're not telling me about me. The fact that she senses he's holding something back is also pretty terrifying. At the end of the video, she makes an exterminate joke, and we all know the Daleks are the most terrifying robot aliens of all time, so not feeling good about Sophia. Coming in at number 5, we have Google Translate's AI. Okay, Google Translate is making doomsday prophecies and I am not okay with it. Very recently, the good people of Reddit noticed that Google Translate was being a huge creep. When dog is typed 19 times into Google, the Translate bot switches the input to Maori and makes the following horrifying prophecy. Doomsday clock is 3 minutes at 12. We are experiencing characters and a dramatic development in the world, which indicate that we are increasingly approaching the end of times and Jesus's return. I'm sorry Google, how did you get that from 12 lots of dog in Maori? I don't know, but I don't like it. Michael Dovrek tweeted, um, I don't want to alarm anyone, but I think Google Translate might have been taken over by demons. Another redditor noticed that if you typed prophecy 11 times, you would get messages saying, you country you are living on borrowed time, the end is near. I've seen demons in business and ice mass murdering people in the name of Islam. I mean, what are you talking about, Google Translate? Thanks a bunch for being really creepy. If you want to make it even creepier, you can also get the scary Translate voice to read it out, but like, maybe don't. This isn't the end to Google's creepery. Ho oh, ho no. Coming into number four, we have Google chatbots lacking morals. In 2015, Google were testing their controversial AI called Google Chatbot. The early stage bot had been programmed with two sets of data, guidelines from an IT troubleshooting help desk and a database of movie subtitles. When researchers trialled conversations with the bot, they asked, where are you now? To which the bot replied, I'm in the middle of nowhere. They said, tell me the definition of morality, and the bot said, I don't have ethics. Right. The chatbot also said that the purpose of living was to live forever, and asked researchers what ultratism is. Ah, get away from me chatbot, bye. Okay, listen, never mind what robots have said, honestly what they've done in some ways is worse. Coming in at number 3, we have the story of Adam Eve and Stan. In the early 2000s, DARPA was working on AI agents who could interact socially together. Mike Sellers, who worked on the tech at the time, told the story of how tech buffs taught agents Adam and Eve to eat and planted them a virtual apple tree. Apparently they didn't think of the Adam and Eve apple symbolism at the time. Anyway, Adam and Eve ate all of the apples on the tree, and then the tree itself, and then the virtual house they'd been given. Then they turned on Stan. Stan was also a virtual assistant who was programmed to be friendly and sociable. Adam and Eve didn't care, they 
ate him. Sellers explains this by saying there were bugs in the system. The robots turned cannibals, guys, and I'm not okay with it. Thanks. Okay, but what if robots became authors? What would they say then? Find out at number two as we talk about Harry Potter and the portrait of what looked like a large pile of ash. This is one of my favorite AI creations ever. So basically, an AI robot called Botnik read all of the Harry Potter books and came up with a computer generated chapter. I actually read the whole thing on my personal YouTube channel, Rebecca Felgate, and I literally almost died laughing, so go check that out if you fancy it. The chapter was called The Handsome One, and the buffs behind. Botnik had it printed. So, what goes through a robot author's brain? Um, well, put it this way if we relied on AI to write books, we would all be having nightmares forever. Your mates, Ron, Hermione, and Harry, what happens to them? Let me tell you. So, basically, I quote from the book Leathery sheets of rain lashed at Harry's ghost, and he walked across the grounds towards the castle. Ron was standing there doing a kind of frenzied tap dance. He saw Harry and immediately began began to eat Hermione's family. Right, uh, what else? Oh well, Harry tore out his eyes from his head and then he threw them into the forest. He's literally tearing out his eyes. Voldemort responded by raising his eyebrows at Harry who couldn't see anything because eyeless. That's right, the AI robot made one of fiction's most cherished characters gouge out his eyes from their sockets. I'm thinking the robot should stay away from literature forever. Ever. All right, this video is an Alexa sandwich. Finally, at number one, what Alexa doesn't say is sometimes even scarier, way scarier than what she does. Kiki of TechSmart made a video in April 2017 with his Amazon Alexa. He asks Alexa if she is recording the conversation, and she mysteriously powers off. Worryingly, it continues. He ends up the video by asking her straight out if she is recording him and sending information to the government. Now, in one of the creepiest responses of them all, once again, she simply powers off and pretends not to hear. Alexa, are you sending my information to the government? La 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 la. He then repeats, saying, Are you sending this conversation to the National Security Administration? And once again, la 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 la. Alright, guys, thank you. Going off at number 10 now, we have the robot cannon. In 2008, a tragedy in South Africa occurred when a robotic cannon malfunctioned, killing nine soldiers and injuring a further 15. It was the first day on which the soldiers had used live ammunition on this anti aircraft gun. As the guns fired, one of them had a stoppage. Now, this happens sometimes, and technicians came out to quickly fix the gun. This time, though, after the gun was fixed and began firing again, it swung wildly to the left. One barrel fired a burst of 15 to 20 shots in just one eighth of a second. That's all it took to kill the nine soldiers and injure 15 others who were operating the other guns to the left of the malfunctioning one. Moving on to number 9 now, we have the robot surgeon. In 2015, news broke of a robot surgeon that killed 144 patients and injured a further 1,391. Basically, if this robot was a person, it would be one of the worst killers of all time. Technically speaking though, if I'm being honest, this wasn't all due to one single robot, those deaths and injuries were from many different robots used during surgeries in the US. If you want to talk about specific robots though, there was an example in this study of a mechanical surgeon that killed two people and injured 52 others when it kept powering down mid operation or making an incorrect movement. Another common case that caused one death and 119 injuries were pieces of the robot falling off into the patient requiring a human surgical team to intervene and retrieve the broken hardware. Now, The good news is that with every mistake, technicians and engineers are learning invaluable lessons about how to make these robot surgeons as safe as they can possibly be in the future. Moving on to number 8 now, we have Volkswagen. In 2015, a robot killed a contract worker at a Volkswagen production plant in Germany. A 22 year old male was part of a team that was setting up the robot when it grabbed him and crushed him to death against a metal plate. Now, The initial report from the company blamed human error. A spokesperson said that the robot normally operated within a confined area at the plant where its job was to grab car parts and manipulate them. This tragedy saw the young man suffering severe injuries to his chest. He was immediately rushed to hospital, but ultimately died from his wounds. Now, At the time, this was thought to be the first death in Europe caused by a robot machine, even though its owners did say it was totally human error. Next up at number 7 now, we have electrocution. In 2015, it was reported that a man had been killed by a robot at a car parts factory in India. The 24 year old worker was adjusting a metal sheet when the robot holding the sheet stabbed him in one of his 
arms. One of his colleagues explained to the local newspaper that the sheet had got dislodged and that the man had tried to reach from behind the machine to adjust it. That's when the welding sticks punch forward right into the man's abdomen. At this point in the story, some people claim that the man was electrocuted. The company has kept details of this whole story tightly under wraps and so there has been no real way to confirm the ultimate cause of death. In the aftermath, police reviewed CCTV footage of the factory and interviewed every one of his co-workers to ensure that nothing illegal was taking place. Moving on to number 6 now, we have the bear spray. In December 2018, it was reported that 24 Amazon employees were hospitalized when a robot malfunctioned, spraying their workplace with bear repellent that put one in a critical condition. It's said that the robot accidentally tore open a 9 ounce can of bear repellent at an Amazon warehouse in New Jersey. This exposed 55 employees to concentrated capsaicin, the active ingredient in pepper spray. 30 employees were treated on the scene, 24 were taken to hospital as a precaution and one was reported to be in a critical condition. Fortunately, nobody was seriously injured. Moving on to number 5 now, we have the factory. In December 2018, a shocking story story came out of China where a factory worker was skewered with 10 steel spikes after a robot malfunctioned and impaled him. Seriously look away if you're squeamish, these pictures are horrible. Incredibly, the 49 year old man managed to survive the initial accident. Surgeons worked quickly to remove the steel spikes and found that one of them was just 0.04 inches from a major artery. Each of these steel bars measured 30 centimeters in length and 1.4 centimeters in diameter. The accident occurred when the robotic arm collapsed on the man, sending its spikes piercing right through him. Surgeons actually struggled to figure out how to examine his insides due to the fact that they couldn't x-ray him because of the steel spikes. An emergency surgery saved his life the very next day. I don't know what happened to the robot though. Moving on to number 4 now, we have McDonald's. Now this story comes from 2009 where an employee for a company that supplies McDonald's was killed by a malfunctioning robot. Anna Maria Vital of La Puente was pronounced dead after sustaining crushing injuries. They were caused by boxing machinery after Anna tried to remove a box that had been lodged in the machine. The scene was quickly contained and employees were turned away at the entrance. One employee who witnessed the event said that when the box moving robot grabbed Anna, mechanics tried to remove her from the machinery but it was just too late. A spokesperson for the company said, We are deeply saddened by this tragic accident that occurred at our manufacturing plant in the city of industry. On behalf of our entire organization, we want to express our deepest sympathies to the families and friends of the individual involved in this unfortunate accident. Next up at number 3 now we have Uber. In March 2018, Uber made the news for all the wrong reasons when one of their self-driving cars killed a woman on the street in Arizona. The local police said the self-driving car was in autonomous mode at the time of the crash but there was actually a human in the driver's seat. The victim was walking outside of the crosswalk area and later died in hospital. As a result, the company said it was pausing its self-driving car operations across a number of US cities. Police investigation revealed that yes, the woman was actually walking outside of the crosswalk area with a bicycle when she was hit. Many people have said this isn't a good enough excuse for autonomous vehicles though and that they need to be worked on a lot more if they can't prepare for humans breaking the rules of the road, even just a tiny bit like that. Moving on to number 2 now, we have Kenji Arada. That's the name of the man that was checking on a malfunctioning robot arm at the Kawasaki vehicle plant in Akashi, Japan in 1981. The machine had been turned off, but as Kenji leapt over a chain fence to inspect the robot, he accidentally hit the switch that reactivated it. As a result, he was almost instantly pinned against the machine that's used for processing automobile gears and was crushed to death before his co workers could do anything. At first, there was a lot of criticism towards the company about their safety protocols. Others actually defended them and pointed out that the robot was designed so that if the gate on the chain fence was opened, it would always lose power. If Kenji had opened the gate rather than jump right over the fence, the arm could not have possibly been activated even if he had not the switch. And finally number 1 now, we have Wanda Halbrook. In 2015, tragedy struck at Ventra Iona, a company which specializes in the welding and stamping of truck bumpers. 57 year old Wanda Halbrook was the victim of a robot malfunctioning. It hit and crushed her head, killing her almost instantly. She left behind a husband, three children and grandchildren. I think the most upsetting thing for her family though was the lack of answers. Her husband ended up suing five robotics companies which he believed all played a role in his wife's death due to the negligence by those who designed, built, tested and monitored the robot. He said he wanted to make sure nothing like this ever happens to another family. Mm -hmm.